you are not going to believe the screaming values we can get in 2024 fantasy football drafts already right now on underdog fantasy. I cannot stop drafting this group of players and highly recommend that you do too. And I'm going to show you and tell you why right now. All right, guys, what's up? Eric here from Spike Week. I've been drafting for the last week or so. Yes, we're drafting 2024 fantasy football teams already here in early February, but I've been drafting on Underdog Fantasy in their two main tournaments they have out right now, the big board and the little board, <clears throat> about 12 drafts in. And we've reached that point where I feel really strongly about a, a certain collection of players that we need to be drafting. So it's time to get into those exact players and show you why and how much of them I am drafting myself. So if we take a look here, you can see on your screen our draft IQ tool over at Spike Week. If you're unfamiliar, um, it is our, our proprietary, proprietary tool that we have built specifically for best ball drafters on underdog fantasy, DraftKings, and drafters. So you can really track your portfolio of players, teams, stacks, structures everything that you're doing in your best ball drafts you can slice and dice <clears throat> your portfolio here within our draft iq tool so pulling this up because i'm not just going to tell you who to draft and who i like i'm going to show you these are the guys i am specifically drafting in my drafts right now in 2024 so if i zoom in just a little bit here you can quickly see on the left hand side the players the top exposure players that i'm drafting right now uh and i'm gonna kick it off at the very top of the list, you see Malik Washington. I have I drafted 12 teams. Malik Washington is on nine of them. But Malik Washington kind of uh, stands for something that I believe in <clears throat> even more so than just Malik Washington. A, uh, if you have purchased our Best Ball Almanac, the 2024 Best Ball Almanac, you can find the data, detailed breakdowns, and everything that you want to know about the rookies to be drafting here, but you'll see under top targets, Malik Washington is my guy. I, I don't think that the market has really quite understood how dominant Malik Washington was in 2023 at Virginia. He came from Northwestern, one of the worst power five football programs in the entire country and definitely one of the worst offenses, but he was a target dominator at Northwestern and that translated to to Virginia this past year from a targets per route run um, yards per route run perspective. You see here again on your screen from a yards per route run in this rookie class, Malik Washington is sixth overall, not too far behind Malik neighbors, Marvin Harrison, Troy Franklin. And from a targets per route run perspective, he is third Marvin Harrison jr. Is first. Malachi Corley is second and Malik Washington is third in targets per route run. He operated mostly out of the slot, but that's okay. That's okay. You saw someone like a Rashi Rice <clears throat> with a really low a dot take advantage of kind of where the NFL is going. Malik Washington was also third in the entire country in yards after the catch in college football in 2023. He makes for this perfect type player that sure. He's not going to be catching Deshaun Jackson bombs, down the sideline, but that's okay. We don't need that. He goes super duper late. He is one of the best wide receiver prospects in this class, but he's being treated as one of the worst wide receiver prospects in this class on underdog, taking a huge stand on Malik Washington. But as I mentioned before, what he really highlights is something I actually wrote about today. Again, if you have the Almanac, you can get this in my, my big key takeaways in my big board drafts right now. I'll make sure to post a link in the description to the almanac but it is rookies rookie wide receivers rookie running backs <clears throat> if we look back to most prior seasons but certainly last season we wanted to be head over heels for the rookies in this particular tournament in the big board the little board these early 2024 drafts you see on your screen a lot of my highest exposure players are rookies and also late rookies malik washington cody schrader Ray Davis, Javon Baker, Jaden Daniels, 
Marshawn Lloyd, et cetera, et cetera. A lot of my highest exposure players are these rookies because if you look back at 2023, you see who all the league winners, if you will, the league winners of 2024, 2023, excuse me. It was all the rookies. It was all the rookies. You almost could have never drafted too many rookies. You're going to have whiffs. We have 20 rounds in these drafts on underdog to make our selections. And last year, if I told you, you could have had Sam Laporta and Tank Dell and Puka Nakua and Devon Achan and Jameer Gibbs and right, the list goes on and on and on. All these rookies saying, you know, the, the power of them and especially Sam Laporta, Tank Dell, Puka. These guys were all very, very, very late round picks, very, very late round picks. And yet this year, yet again, outside of this, the very top rookies, Marvin Harrison, Malik neighbors, the market is really sour on the rookies. And so I'm trying to get way overweight. The majority of rookies, the ones who I have highly rated in, in my rankings and um, my targets, my breakdowns, those players, I'm trying to get way out ahead of, and I'm totally willing to draft six, seven, eight rookies on any one individual team, knowing <clears throat> that I may not hit on all of them. I'm not likely to hit on all of them, but I really want to get out ahead of the rookies. That is the cohort of players that we know we absolutely know are going to have league winners come from there. It is the rookies and the young players, which we'll get to more on some of the young players in just a second. But these young players who haven't done it yet in the NFL, there's great veteran picks, which we'll talk about a couple of them as well here in just a second. There's great veteran picks, but the big time league winners, the guys that go from 18th round to the first round next year are often like Apuka Nakua are often these rookies and young players who have not done it yet. So we really want to find those guys. That's how we can draft absolute super teams. Now in these current tournaments, we can always reassess over the summer. If we don't get the perfect landing spot or the draft capital that we want, we can reassess later. But those rookie wide receivers and rookie running backs are the linchpin of our draft strategy right now in the big board on underdog up next uh, you see, if I scroll down just a little bit over here and I get to my very first tight end, David Njoku, on 50% of my big board teams thus far. I don't think the market quite understands just how good David Njoku was last season. If I go over and look at um, some production data, here's what you're seeing on your screen from 2023, filtered specifically for weeks eight week eight through the end of the season now you're filtering down what happened at the beginning of the season we can't completely throw it out but we saw the emergence in the second half of the season from david and joku and he actually from week eight on was the tight end one in all of fantasy scored more fantasy points than sam laporta travis kelsey george kittle tj hawkinson he outscored all of them down the stretch, you know, for the majority of the season in 2023. And yet he is not going up. He's Sam Laporta goes close, you know, middle of the third round, Travis Kelsey and Mark Andrews and these other types still go far, far, far higher. But for us, for us, when I click over to our rankings, you can see really quickly tight end. We have David and Joku at 64th overall. 64th overall, just behind Kittle, just behind Andrews, still pretty close to Travis Kelsey. And that is far ahead of his ADP. I actually think we might be a little bit light on, on David and Joku, but you can see that I'm taking him in just about as many drafts as I can possibly take him in because he's just massively undervalued and the market is not totally factoring in what he did in the second half of last season. Next up, another veteran. Another more veteran player. This guy holds a, if you know me at all, this guy holds a, a special place in my heart over all of the years. But a recent report just came out from the new Tampa Bay Bucks offensive coordinator saying Chris Godwin, veteran wide receiver Chris Godwin, is going to move back into the slot in 2024. Why does this matter? Do we really want him to be in the slot? The outside is where some big plays can happen. Chris Godwin has done all of his best work as a slot receiver 
in the NFL. Pro Bowls, you know, uh, ending up in the voting in the top 10 of Offensive Player of the Year. All that kind of stuff came when Chris Godwin's out of the slot. His best skill set is that that translates to the slot. He is an exceptional run after the catch player, really tough to tackle, getting open in small spaces over the middle. He's really physical. They moved him to the outside in 2023. They have mentioned, they said, to try to uh, preserve his health a little bit more. But they're flipping back because he is at his best from within the slot. And if again, if you see on your screen here in 2022, now granted, this is with Tom Brady, this is, this is Baker Mayfield or whoever the Bucks quarterback is in 2024, not quite the same thing as Tom Brady. However, we can regress this back for Baker Mayfield, who was pretty darn good in 2023. And when I look at Chris Godwin here, he was 10th in the entire NFL, 10th in the entire NFL in total targets right right behind Amon Ross St. Brown AJ Brown CD Lamb Stefan Diggs those types not very far behind all of those guys in total number of targets in just 15 games most of those guys played two more games than he did and he was still in the top 10 of total targets in 2022 so if we can get anything remotely close to that for Chris Godwin as he flashed a bit more down the stretch of 2023 if we can get anything close to the form that we saw back of course when brady was there but back when he was in the slot i think chris godwin is an absolute home run home run pick and again when i go over to our rankings 57th overall for chris godwin um i expect production much more similar back to 2022 2021 from godwin and he's also in a really fun spot in the draft where it's kind of an awkward zone. It's another thing to keep in, you know, keep in mind with some of these things is when you get to certain pockets of the draft, there's not a lot you might love there. Wide receiver has kind of fallen off a little bit. He's also only one of the one of the only wide receivers even in his range of ADP on underdog. So he just makes an absolutely perfect slam dunk pick for us on underdog fantasy. All right, one more um, sort of archetype of a player that I really want to get into here. If you, again, look at my personal exposure, um, I want to talk about Andre Yoshivas. So I lied. We're going to do two more. Andre Yoshivas, my, you know, tied for my second highest owned player, one of my biggest stands in all of these best ball drafts so far on underdog. You might say, hey, who the heck is Andre Yoshivas? And how? why is that how you pronounce his name? It looks like IOC this. Yes, the second, soon to be second year player out of Princeton was a guy who I kind of liked a little bit as, a, as a, a prospect coming out. Again, I'm really big into the guys who produce, as you see with Malik Washington, dominate targets, have production, even if it's at a little bit lower level <clears throat> of football, maybe they don't run a 4-240. I really like those, those kinds of guys. Yoshivas, didn't have a, a monster, a monster rookie season, but you do see here at the end of the season when we see some of these rookies tend to emerge, he came on strong in weeks sixteen and then in week in week eighteen. You say, why, why does that matter? That that's just two games, but the Cincinnati Bengals are in a spot. When I look here at their um, kind of cap situation, they obviously have some cap space, but Tyler Boyd is a free agent. Very unlikely, in my opinion, to return to the Cincinnati Bengals. T. Higgins is also a free agent. I think much more likely to return, but ap- certainly not a necessity, right? The, I bring this up because the Bengals have cap space, but they also have, you see, Jonah Williams is a free agent. Chidobi Awuzie is a free agent. DJ Reader is a free agent. If they're going to Im- make improvements to the, the defense was not very good this year. The offensive line needs to continue to be a priority for them, right? If they're going to make these improvements, that $60 million in cap space goes away pretty quickly. They also are going to need to start planning for the Jamar, the big, massive Jamar Chase extension. So why does all of that matter? Well, a very, very cheap second-year wide receiver who flashed in a Bengals offense with Joe Burrow coming back and Jamar Chase drawing attention away on one side is a pretty fun selection to be made in the 18th round of these best ball drafts right now. The market is not considering the fact that he may be and probably will be a starting wide receiver on the Cincinnati Bengals. And 
we're trying, I, I, we at Spike Week are trying to get out ahead of our good friend, Yoshi. Last thing on him is that we did see actual production in those spot starts, those chances he had to play. Uh, when I look here at uh, the late season game, uh, December 23rd against the Steelers, of course, the Bengals lost this one, but Yoshi was the leading target getter on the entire team tied with T Higgins, but T Jamar chase did not play in this game. T Higgins and Tyler Boyd did play and Yoshi had eight targets on 42 pass attempts in this one from Jake Browning again, tied with T Higgins fast forward to week 18 T Higgins is out and Yoshi you see over here leads the team in snaps at the wide receiver position and leads the team in targets at wide receiver chasing and Boyd kind of mixed in and out. They only played around half around half the snaps, but in this game, Yoshi scored two had two receiving touchdowns, seven targets, five for 36 and two. I think we've seen um, enough and the Bengals probably saw enough to take a shot on this kid, at least give him the first crack at being one of these starting wide receivers. When we expect Tyler Boyd is probably gone and it's possible. It's possible that T Higgins is gone as well. Even if T returns, I think he can be the wide receiver three, but the upside is to be the wide receiver two in a Cincinnati Bengals offense, which is certainly worth a lot more than an ADP of 200 plus in these drafts. Last thing I said, that was going to be my last thing, but I lied. Um, if I go just super quickly to the latest article that I wrote here in the almanac, my early adjustments, um, in the big board, just want to scroll down. It says take the risk on these on these running backs. Specifically, I mention a player like Zamir White. Um, when I go to my draft IQ page, you'll see I believe 42% Zamir. Yeah, 42% Zamir White. So I've drafted five teams out of 12 with Zamir White on it. <clears throat> uh, it's this one's pretty straightforward. Josh Jacobs is a free agent. Antonio Pierce is back is the head coach for the Los, Ada, Los, 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 Las Vegas Raiders. Yeah. Las Vegas Raiders. And down the stretch with Antonio Pierce in charge, no Josh Jacobs, Zamir white emerged into it. An RB one for fantasy. He was in the top 10 of total points uh, from week 15 on in the 2023 fantasy football season. And he also quite frankly was just good. He, he, he proved to be a good, football player, former top high school recruit, right? Georgia, all that fun stuff waited in the wings, never really got an opportunity. And then Josh Jacobs goes down and he produces just as well as Josh Jacobs does. They are a team that has a huge amount of money dedicated to Jimmy Garoppolo, a lot of money dedicated to say Devonte Adams, right? And some of their superstars that are on their team, Jimmy G not being a superstar. He's a, uh, they're paying a lot for a quarterback to ride the bench, a good spot to save money then for them for them is a third year super cheap middle round running back in Zamir White and not paying. Let somebody else overpay for Josh Jacobs. That is the you know the the bull case that happens for Zamir White is we're getting this starting running back workhorse running back on the Raiders at a almost ADP of one thirty on underdog. You might say, well, they could sign someone. They could draft someone. And that is absolutely true. The problem is that is th that risk is completely baked in. The worst case scenario, the worst case scenario is that Zamir White is a backup, right? Okay, they bring Josh Jacobs back. Shoot, I took his handcuff. I took Josh Jacobs' handcuff at pick 130. That's not, it's not ideal, but we saw that can still be valuable. Josh Jacobs misses time. Or, right, they draft someone to kind of split some work with Zamir White. Okay, worst case scenario now, you have some standalone value with Zamir and still the same upside that we had before. And best case scenario is that they don't bring anybody in. They say, we love what we saw from Zamir White. He's our starting running back heading into 2024. But the drafters that we're competing against are not even considering that fact. He's drafted as if mm, there's no real chance that he's going to become the starting running back, right? In years past, that's exactly what would have happened. This guy would be going in the sixth or seventh round because he's right now, he's atop the Raiders depth chart. He's atop the Raiders depth chart. And so in the past, people would have said, well, he, he's the starting running back. We, 
the market has gotten much smarter. But I would argue in this particular instance, with someone like a Zamir White, there's only upside and basically no risk at this new at this new cost. I just want to throw another couple honorable mentions in there that are very, very similar to a Zamir White. Again, using my exposure, so you can see the players that I'm drafting. You see a Ronnie Rivers and Khalil Herbert on here, who I actually have uh, a little bit more of. I need to get myself some more Zamir White. Khalil Herbert is very, very similar to Zamir. As so long as he has been healthy, he has been the lead back for the Bears for multiple years now. The offense might get a lot better. Who knows whether it's Caleb Williams or or another, you know, Justin Fields with better weapons, better offensive line. Donta Foreman is going to be gone. At worst, you're getting a, a timeshare with Roshan Johnson. At best, you're getting a really efficient runner in a really good situation <clears throat> at again in the in the 120s, 130s um, for the Bears. These guys make for they, they fit any structure you want to draft with, but they make for great zero running back targets. And then I'll also call out Ronnie Rivers. What? Ronnie Rivers? What are you talking about? Rivers was the strict, straight-up handcuff to Kyron Williams uh, th this past season. We just didn't happen to see the total contingent value because when Kyron got hurt and missed time during the middle of the season, so did Rivers. Rivers happened to get hurt at the exact same time. He comes back. He is absolutely the straight handcuff for Kyron. Basically, taking every snap that Kyron does not take. He is, as you see on your screen, listed as a free agent because he is technically an exclusive rights free agent. I won't, I won't bore you with the exclusive rights thing. Go ahead and Google it when we're done here. It's almost a certainty that he will be back on the Rams given how an exclusive rights free agent works out. So in a, in a team that is not in the best cap space, right? You got Matthew Stafford and Cooper Cup and Aaron Donald, and they, they don't want to spend at the running back position, especially when they have Kyron Williams. They trust Ronnie Rivers, and he's going to be back in super cheap. They trusted him as a rookie last year. I believe pretty strongly that Ronnie Rivers is the direct handcuff to a first-round pick running back. We saw what Kyron did, and Kyron is a great football player, but he's not a mega superstar talent. He's a good enough talent to get the work, for the Rams. And if Ronnie rivers is the next man up to get that work, we're getting a guy in the 20th round who could turn into an RB one through one injury. And we've already seen Kyron Williams get hurt twice just this past year. And he got hurt also as a rookie. So there's a decent likelihood that he does get hurt again. And his handcuff is not being drafted right now. So I'm taking a big stand there. You guys get it with that specific archetype of a player. There's several more of those, and I wrote about those in the in the almanac. Again, make sure and check that link in the description to get access to that. Check out Draft IQ, which you just saw on on your screen, and of course the 2024 NFL Best Ball Almanac with Spike Week. It's going to be live all the way throughout the course of the entire. 2024 football season you get into in-season drafts on underdog and DraftKings. of course all the main stuff with best ball mania and the DraftKings millie makers the drafters uh uh best ball championship all of that will be covered one fee of 69.99 right now gets you access to all of that content from the big boards through the summer and even on into the in-season drafts one quick one quick favor before you get out of here hit that like button Hit that subscribe button. We're going to be coming with tons and tons and tons of fantasy football content for you over the course of the next six months, nine months, 10 months here at Spike Week. So subscribe so you can get notified when all of that drops. Um, and check us out next time. I'll see you guys.